Home is a place. No, no, no. Home is a feeling. Home is my motherland. It's more where you feel alive and inspired. Well, I think we're talking about the same thing, aren't we? Home, Home is where our story, story begins. begins. What's, What's your story? story? Homesick at Home, every Friday from 9 to 10 p.m. on Radio Van 103.1 with Ina M.K. and Rina D. Shaw City. I'm coming home again. Good evening, dear listeners of Radio Van. We are back here in Radio Van studio. This is Friday night and... Of course, we have a guest. But before that, Rena Jan, good evening. How are you? I'm fine. Good evening, Ina. How are you? Uh, how are And you? And you're have, back. Have you missed Homesick at Home? <laughs> you have, <laughs> Without. You? Of course we have. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's And good. I'm sure the <laughs> listeners have too. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so tonight, our guest is beautiful lady, Datevik Manukyan. The European Projects Coordinator at AGBU Europe in Brussels. Our Armenian horse, <laughs> <laughs> a Frank Engel, member of the European Parliament and the Honorary Consul of Armenia in Luxem Luxembourg. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Did I say everything right? <laughs> That's all correct. <laughs> 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 How are you, Tate Vikjan? I'm doing fine. I'm trying to enjoy my last day in Armenia. Well, pre-last, actually. So I'm trying to do my best to, to grasp all the atmosphere. And are you comfortable here now on the red couch? You know, I have an Armenian, I mean, a glass of Armenian wine next to me, so it makes it all perfect. Ah, great. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So let's start. Uh, can we hear your story? Where were you born? Where do you live? Okay, let's start from the beginning. Oh, uh, I was born in Armenia in a small city called Ararat. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to Yerevan to do my studies. I, I studied bachelor in the State Economical University in Yerevan. And then I moved to Sweden to do my master's. Um, mm -hmm. And then after us, my family was living in Belgium for a long time. I moved to Belgium to live with my family. So why Sweden? Why Sweden? That's that's a question I'm asked very often. Um, I guess it's just because it's first of all a very safe country, mm -hmm. and of course my parents were concerned about my safety, so it mm. was they were excited to get to know that I was accepted in one of the Swedish universities. And secondly, why not? <laughs> <laughs> True. <Yeah. laughs> Uh, so you're here visiting. I'm here visiting, exactly. And uh, how does it feel being here now? Uh, it's very intense, very exciting, very tiring, uh, very incredible altogether. <laughs> I think Rena meant the new Armenia situation. Yes. Oh, the new Armenia, <laughs> yeah. Well, I see people being actually so in a good mood. This is... Uh, so you feel this difference? I, I exactly mm. feel the difference, yeah. of course. And I'm happy myself to, to feel the difference because everyone in the diaspora were, was um, following the, uh, what was happening here in mm. Armenia. So it was very exciting for me to come to see it on the ground. And now you have stories to tell people when you go back. Exactly, <laughs> yes. Uh, speaking of diaspora, do you consider yourself diaspora now? Because we're joking, you know, we say, <laughs> oh, we have a guest from, <laughs> from, diaspora, from diaspora here. We, we joke this way with that, but in reality, yeah. Uh, you What's know, whenever, the feeling? Yes, whenever I'm asked that question, I'm always asking the question back, do you consider me a diasporian or do you consider me a mm. So, how do you consider? <laughs> <laughs> This is a trick, actually. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> When you answer a question with a question. Well, well okay, <laughs> I, I personally don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm an Armenian who doesn't live in Armenia. That's... That's uh, the differentiation I make. So, Hastansi and Boch Hastansi, if I may say it in Armenian. Sure, we we can we can say anything here, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. This is that place. So, uh, when you just mentioned this, uh, it, when you talk about home, 
where is that? Oh, uh, very interesting question because I actually lost the feeling of feeling home anywhere. Oh. Uh, this, this sounds sad for me as well. But on the other hand, I feel also at home everywhere, maybe. I can, I can put it that way. Whenever I'm here, I miss Belgium, I miss Sweden, because, you know, I have something also created there as well. It's not only in Armenia that I have created things. I created my circle of friends and all, the, all these things. But I also worked hard on those things in Sweden, in Belgium. So, mm -hmm. And traveling a lot makes you also a globetrotter, like mm -hmm. a, a cosmopolitan. And uh, why not to become one at some point? Still, why not? <laughs> yeah, but uh, what about the feeling of homesickness? I mean, okay, yeah. let's say, do you what do you miss the most when you're not in Armenia? Uh, the atmosphere, the warmth coming from people, and also maybe sometimes it even makes me uh, angry. But in a way, I also like this. Um, not certainty in anything. Mo if okay, I, may I say. see what you say. Mm. So in, in Europe, everything is very certain. When you get an appointment, when you when you do something, uh, everything is very certain, sharp, on mm -hmm. point, on time. Here in Armenia, it is just somewhere in the air. <laughs> and I yeah. guess sometimes it's just fun to be, to be in an environment like that. So yeah. it is uh, maybe... The jam session <laughs> <laughs> about Armenia. <Yeah. laughs> okay, so what is Armenia to you? How would you describe, how would you define it? It is uh, where I feel myself at my best, at my easiest, if mm -hmm. I may say so. And it is somewhere that I feel inspired. That is not something that I feel in many places. So mm. the, the other question, what inspires you? Yeah, we have the answer good. already. <laughs> uh, now we have to go on a little advertisement break, which maybe could inspire us a little bit uh, to a new level of our conversation. Stay tuned. This is Homesick at Home. And our guest is Tatev Manukyan. <laughs> Steven's gone, Rafi's gone, Rena, de, de, de asa, what am I gonna do? Well dear, that's the way men are. Maybe you should try a woman. What? Rena, kesi cheraf? Ina, hangazdatsi, I meant as a co-host. Vaj. Homesick at home. This is how we do it, it's Friday night. It's Friday night, yes it is, and we're back. So, we are hosting tonight beautiful Datevik Manukyan, who has a story to tell us about her life journey. And let's continue with, uh, with uh, where you were studying. Sweden. Sweden, yes. Exactly. Please, tell us about this Sweden experience that you had, because you mentioned that it was not only a studying experience, but also a growing experience, right? For you exactly. As that a was, person. Yes. That was a unique experience, uh, just because it was also a lifetime experience of how to become an, an independent person how to grow in a big world, mm -hmm. to grow up in a big world. And, um, well, sometimes, uh, if I may joke about it, I say, if I ever have gone through hell, that was Sweden. Okay. And, and that's why I love it for. <laughs> nice. Uh, because it had a great impact on my personality. Uh, just because, you know, there are so many differences between Armenia and Sweden. Armenia is very Caucasian mm -hmm. country, mixed with European, Oriental and all kinds of culture and influenced by all these cultures. And then you go to, you are a 20 years old, old girl and you go to Sweden, a very cold, scandy country. And it's like going from one extreme to the, to the other one. <laughs> So it's uh, it's a life experience when you have to balance all the aspects of life. 
a lot of things just to to bring from one extreme mm -hmm. and from the other extreme to the middle and then see what you what you want to do with yourself in this life so yes that uh you are married as we mentioned uh, yes. and you have a very busy schedule uh, how do you balance being a working woman and a wife? Is it how difficult is it? I'm not going to ask if it's difficult or not. Uh, yeah, that's a very interesting thing to talk about. You know, the the type of husband I have, I always say it's like having a half time job with a par parliamentarian. <laughs> By the um, way, we want to say hello to Frank right now. <laughs> hello, Pesa John. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Frank. Hi, Frank. I, haven't, I haven't seen you yeah. for, for a long time. So. I wish he was here because uh, he's also a very interesting person to talk to. Next time we will have you as a couple in our studio, I hope. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> let's so, interfere in our family life. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back to the question. How do you balance busy, busy um, lady? I think you just have to have the personality of, of wanting to do things, not just sitting at home maybe mm -hmm. I, 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 ju I would just be very short in that saying it's, it's a choice and I love the choice I made being very busy trying to be everywhere at the same time which doesn't work most of the time <laughs> <laughs> uh, so overall I wouldn't I don't think my husband would like to see me sitting at home as well so this is something um, we have in common being, doing, creating things in life and trying to achieve something. And you can't do that by being just a non-working person or someone who doesn't do things. So this is a great marriage puzzle that we have here. <laughs> the understanding <laughs> the is puzzle. the key. <laughs> and understanding is the key, exactly. Sometimes it's, of course, very difficult to combine our schedules. But uh, that's why. Because Frank travels a lot. Frank tra travels a lot. You know, when they ask us, where do you guys live? Mm -hmm. I say, well, I live in Brussels, and he visits me from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> so what countries have you been together? Well, in two years' time that mm -hmm. we are together, we have been in 20 countries, exactly. Cool. <clears throat> together, that's what I mean. Uh, well, do you want me to count all of them? <laughs> well, the, <laughs> the, the highlights, mm -hmm. maybe. Yes, the most interesting ones were the ones uh, which are the, f the further... Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, in the globe, China, Greenland, and Rwanda. I would mention these three. And is there a country that you would like to revisit, maybe? Revisit? Hmm. Uh, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> all of the above. Uh, <laughs> all okay. of them. I hope your husband hears us right now. <laughs> if not, we will send him the recorded <laughs> version of, <laughs> of our show. <laughs> To That's make so sure fun. he's aware of your wishes. That um, uh, what would be considered for you as your yeah. most uh, valuable achievement? Uh, most valuable achievement is um, oh, there are so many things to talk um, to talk in this in this topic. I would of course mention uh, my friends, my family, but this is not something that I that I achieve. This is something I have, and um, the achievement, maybe the level of globe trotterism or yeah. of being a cosmopolitan, but just the level I reached by mm -hmm. now. I'm not there yet, mm -hmm. <laughs> where I would like to be, but just that level of understanding other people, understanding other nations, other cultures other languages and trying to take these steps further this what i would uh, claim to be an achievement thank you <laughs> how did you earn your first salary uh, that have you done <laughs> <laughs> do you remember this well experience? i'm trying to dig up in my memory um, do i even remember that i don't think so no no i don't think so okay let's go to the next one <laughs> what kind of professional mistakes would you tolerate? Professional mistakes? Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
maybe the things that are connected with um, human emotional mistakes, mm -hmm. emotional mistakes, maybe I could tolerate. I, I would still talk about these things to the person who made or, or even I would accept someone talking to me about those if I would mm -hmm. uh, make one. But maybe those are those are mistakes that could be understandable in certain situations. What about those that couldn't be? Which would be those? <laughs> Which were done with bad intentions? As a quick She's answer, a I would say. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna, this was going to be my next question. <laughs> Emotions <actually>. are always <laughs> there, attached to but, uh, <laughs> This is, I really agree with her because I feel the same. I could, I mean, I could forgive any action as long as the intention was right. Exactly. I, I, I do agree completely. Yes. Tatevik, you sound uh, like such a calm and uh, balanced person and your voice makes us dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> but are there things that make you really angry? What are they? Oh, yes. <laughs> there are things okay, that so make me... Okay, so the tone changes right yeah. there. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Look, I confess I have an alter ego. <laughs> yeah. I, I confess it all the time and I do it right now. Uh, sometimes I do, of course, I do get angry, but it takes time for me to get angry and it also takes time for me to, to calm down. down. Mm -hmm. Yes. For yeah. my husband, it's the opposite. He's a very impulsive person. He gets angry very quickly and then... And then forgives. Yes. Yeah. What is star sign? Sorry? What, Taurus. What's his... Ah, uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we have discussed this already. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I am Libra. Okay. The perfect match. <laughs> uh, okay, I think there are a lot of people who would like to hear this romantic story of you guys. How we how you met? How we met? Oh, yeah. I I have heard it, but You've it's, it, it, but it's beautiful. So. so I will tell it for you with pleasure. You know, I okay, I, I can go and take a break. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'll I'll hear it with pleasure once again. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I used I used to say I'm not a romantic romantic person. I don't consider myself to be a romantic person. But my story makes me believe in romantic stories mm -hmm. because I consider it someone something uh, romantic. That is such and a beautiful line. My story makes me believe in romantic stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Let That's me a write. Beautiful line. <laughs> we will quote that a week later. <laughs> when she leaves us <laughs> okay go ahead we're we're impatient now so we met in armenia mm -hmm. so it's very symbolic for me and it happened so that i was coming to armenia for 10 days and i asked a common friend of ours and i didn't know that he was a friend of my husband at that time I asked him to take me to, to Datev Monastery because I haven't been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. Datev and wants to go to Datev. Datev exactly. And don't tell me that's where he met. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> oh, she's gonna cry. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Keep going. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to cry. Okay. <laughs> hear, hear the whole thing. <laughs> okay. And at the same time, he asked the same person he had he had a very busy planned schedule in Armenia, but at the same time, he, he had, um, I think, half day free, no meetings. And he asked the same person to take him to a monastery called Datev that where he has never been, had never been before. So um, this guy thought it's very actually economical, cheap. I don't know how would you would say it. Just to, there are two tourists. Mm -hmm. Let's let's. Just them. I'm very trying handy. to make Such yeah, very handy. I'm just yeah. trying to make the story funny as well. Yeah. <laughs> so it was his great idea to send us to Tatev in 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 a car, in one car, mm -hmm. and that's how we met. That's how we started to talk. And on our way back from Tatev, did you say thank you to this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, he was invited for the wedding. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow. So this so, was actually fate. I was there too, Rena. <laughs> <laughs> she was there as well. Yes. How to translate Dejijil? 
You can, you can, <laughs> they GG. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> it's like teasing someone. I like, uh, I've been there, you haven't. <laughs> Atav Jan, can you tell a bit about um, what Frank does? And um, I don't, I want you to tell it yourself. Uh, what has he done for Armenia? For Armenia? Uh, well, first of all, he's a he's a deputy in the European Parliament, member of the European Parliament, mm -hmm. and he's also the president of the friendship Artsakh friendship group in in the European Parliament. So all all kinds of projects related to Artsakh and also uh, to Armenia are organized with his help, with his uh, with his sponsorship, and with his uh, cooperation. Uh, cooperation exactly. He is also the honorary consul of Armenia in Luxembourg for already 10 or more than 10 years. And he's yeah. not Armenian, Renanjan. Wow. <laughs> and wow. he's <laughs> starting learning Armenian because I told him that if he wants to understand his kids, that's the first thing he needs to do, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to learn Armenian. I'm getting goosebumps here, you know. <laughs> and in 2015, what happened? Oh, yes. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Thanks a lot for reminding me. <laughs> I'm giving hints here. Yeah. Huh? And in... <laughs> <laughs> and in 2015, in a very, actually, a very symbolic year for, for, our, for the Armenian Genocide, he, um, he introduced a project for Luxembourg to recognize the Armenian Genocide, and, they, and that's what they did. So in 2015, uh, due to Frank's project, Luxembourg... Um, yeah, recognize the Armenian genocide. Wow! So give a give an applause to Seriously. this guy oh. right now. <laughs> Proud to know him. I yes. will, Both I will of give you him. guys. Thanks a lot. It's uh... yes. Renajan, are yes. you okay? Uh, yes, I'm trying. <laughs> are you to, ready to uh, ask the, the the next yes. question, or should uh, I do it for you? I mean, <laughs> after hearing all of this, uh, I want to ask another question. A bit. Okay. You may, of course, the, please. No, nothing to do with this, but sure. what would be the most risky action you have taken in life? Marrying my husband. <laughs> oh, wow. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with a man like this, I don't think you have any risks. But... <laughs> yeah, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about here? <laughs> I'll tell you after the show. Okay? <laughs> no, the risk is, if I may sum summarize, it's um, having a person in international profile like him next to me. It's very motivating thing, but it's also a very, uh, let's say, that it's a big responsibility to try to to match the level of internationality he has already reached. Because I need to actually walk. Work Next to him, yes, I need to walk holding his hand and I need to present not only uh, Armenian Armenianity and the, Ar the, the, the image of an Armenian woman I am, but also a bit of international uh, internationality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See what you're saying. Very yeah. interesting. By the way, Rena Jan. Uh, Are we doing when, this here right now? Yes. I, mean, I don't <laughs> no, know. Okay. If this is... So if if <laughs> uh, people change their last names, I mean, if women change their last names when they get married, uh, here we have the opposite story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because uh, you tell about the 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 door and the and the, the sign. Last you name. mean? Yeah. <laughs> Well, before the door sign, actually, once, I think it was a year so ago. Where did it come from? Yeah, I got it from Armenia, and I'll tell the story. But yeah, sure. before that... I'm in the dark here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so are the yes. listeners. So. <laughs> Coming soon, this is the teaser. <laughs> the teasing, yes. So, um, it was a year ago. I had to go to Zwartnot airport to, to meet him. So I was here a couple of days before him. And I had this great idea just to have a sign with me saying uh, Pesa Engelian. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yeah. And he rec it was written in Armenian, by the way. I didn't put it in English, in Latin letters, oh, meaning. Testing, testing. Exactly. And that's when <laughs> he was learning Armenian alphabet and uh -huh. he, he recognized. He, go he got an <laughs> he A got plus. It. Yes. Passed so he approached exam. me. <laughs> he passed the exam. 
And then uh, even my family calls him Engelian. <laughs> <laughs> so Pesa for our English speaking listeners, <laughs> Pesa means uh, groom. Groom, exactly. Oh. Wow. We have callers here, but they have questions, but we cannot accept calls. I'm sorry. Especially after hearing that story. I'm sure we're going to have a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the door sign story, it's um, last time I was here, I, I wanted to have a door sign on our on our apartment uh, with with our surnames or indicating that it's uh, Frank Engel and Tati Vigman, we can living in here. Mm -hmm. But I thought that's just so boring. If I just put Engelian Nesh in Armenian letter, mm -hmm. everyone who wants to get who is who lives there, they <laughs> will for sure get it. So that's what I did. Now we have a sign posted on our door, uh, wow. and Engelian Nesh. <laughs> so true. what is humor to both of you? Sense of humor. It's Do you uh, get each other often, always? I think the whole time. It is something important, I think, not mm -hmm. only for us, but yeah. in 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 a, for every couple mm -hmm. to to have a good sense of humor and also to understand each other's uh, senses of humor. I meant considering, you know, the different uh, yeah. cultures. Sometimes <laughs> it's difficult to uh, <clears throat> sometimes it's difficult to translate or to explain some yeah. jokes that you always heard well i um, hearing what i hear here i think that i think we have an international they, call they, they have a uh, language of their own so you exactly. found the language yeah of course the, there are some armenian jokes or or phrases that they are not translatable at all it's uh, just i tell him you just have to accept and laugh about it that's it <laughs> you don't even have to understand it it's just Laugh about it and that's it. We got a call uh, a couple of times in our studio. We're sorry, but this is not the format. We cannot accept the calls. But uh, if you have an access to internet, you can go to our official Facebook page, Radio Vaughn FM 103.1, and write all your comments or whatever you would like, and we will be happy to answer them. Okay. Somebody's eager. Yeah, <laughs> of course, I bet. <laughs> Datevik, uh, what inspires you in life? Armenia. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the answers. Yeah, and, we and, got uh, it earlier, but what else? Uh, a lot of things. Deep conversations, traveling, um, humanitarian actions. Um, people with quality, intelligent people inspire me a lot, and people with humor, <laughs> I will mention. Great. Okay, another question to come. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> you, you can have fingers a, crossed. You can have <laughs> sip. Sip. Yeah, and I will use the chance. <laughs> Okay, if you had a chance <laughs> yeah. to have a dinner with any person in the world, life or dead, or so, I, I mean a celebrity or whoever, who would that be? Uh, right now I will say maybe Amal Clooney, because mm -hmm. that's the type of personality, that's the type of woman um, I admire a lot. Mm -hmm. um, because the image she has, the intelligent way of being she has, this is something that inspires me a lot. And then I will say a very uh, standard answer maybe in here. It's um, Angelina Jolie for her humanitarian actions. Mm, I see. This is what I really appreciate in her. I don't consider her a great actress, by the way, but the things in humanitarian aspect she does, yeah, this is something inspiring. Yeah. Understand. Do you do do you practice a charity <coughs> somehow? Uh, yes, from or time you, to time. Do you plan to do something? Of Can course. Can you share I, about these plans? <laughs> uh, I do. We do with my husband mm -hmm. um, some charity, but I would actually leave it unspoken, okay. if I may. Wow! The real <sighs> charity. Oh, yeah. Okay, since uh, we moved on to questions like these, um, which actress do you think could best portray you in a movie? 
about your life, let's say. About my life? Oh, wow. Something I'm thinking for the first time. Yeah, Do you have suggestions? <laughs> We have questions like this. Yeah. <laughs> I see. It's, it's interesting uh, a lot of because our a lot of our guests sometimes discover themselves on, yes. on air here in our And we always, we usually, not always, we usually have this sentence where they go, oh, this is something I'm thinking about for the first time. <laughs> so I, I guess you are so good in finding those questions. <laughs> and we're just giving you time here. You know? I see, <laughs> and I'm using my time. So thank you. Keep going. <laughs> so I okay. I have already. I had enough time, so I will answer that. Um, I guess it's Meryl Streep. She's oh. one of my favorite, favorite, favorite acti actresses of all times. So uh, if we grow her hair long, uh, <laughs> you know, I would diet. even I would even cut my hair just oh, for her wow. to perform. Oh. <laughs> nice. But why would, you, would like... you think she would be the the person who would, would best portray you? Oh, <laughs> you know, she has so many qualities that if I would just if I just start counting them, it will mean I'm I'm. Uh, How would you say this in, in English? Oh, no, it's not that you're not... Brag. Exactly, brag, brag okay. about myself, so... Uh, Just maybe a couple. <laughs> a couple. <laughs> maybe she likes the depth of this actress, right? She exactly, a... and also the unpretentiousness yeah. of her. Yes. Yes. This is something very important in a personality for me. Yeah. Yes. Dotep, do you have phobias? Oh yes, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> but a very strange one. Uh, I'm very afraid of mermaids. No, really? Yes, I Don't know. It me. sounds very silly. <laughs> And tell me, you've seen one? I have never seen one, <laughs> and I have been so many times told that they just don't exist. But I know, I know they don't exist. But it's just this phobia of meeting a mermaid once. Wow. I, I, I wonder why. <laughs> you is know? this something from childhood? Yeah, I was going to ask. Yeah, I think so. A I fairy so. tale? Or... Or, or a movie. I think it came okay. from a movie. I was very traumatized. But I also yeah, have another yeah, explanation. Really? Mm. With mermaids? With mermaids. I mean, I was very stressed with the story. Of the with the story. Mermaid, because the real story is not nothing nothing that not has a to do kind with one the, with a cartoon yeah so i think i've had a very weird childhood because i've never felt anything <laughs> like that <laughs> and This i have an interesting yeah though. and i have a second explanation for that mm -hmm. you know so many sometimes people say you look like a mermaid oh. and then a i princess. i thought Yeah. Oh, princess, a please, princess. <laughs> please. This is our common thing. <laughs> she, she, she likes to to ir me. irritate me, me <laughs> with that. <laughs> Does that irritate you? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, and so I, I thought maybe I, in my previous life mm -hmm. I have been a mermaid and a bad one. <laughs> So uh, now no, I'm no, kind no. of afraid of them. I don't know. So I just okay. tried to make up, made up this story. So, uh, talking about previous lives, do you believe in reincarnation? Uh, yes, in re reincarnation, yes, because we all are kind of energy, and this transforms to something else. The energy transforms to something else. In what this is, maybe I need to find out later. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Do you have secret passions, talents? Oh, yes. What are they? I won't say it. <laughs> Because it's a secret. <laughs> Because it's a secret. Yeah. Okay, okay. One of them. <laughs> Reveal, especially for our show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, should I? Shouldn't I? <laughs> This is the place where you uh, can. I know, she's, she sings in the shower. No, no, I'm so far from singing, yes. Uh, but I'm very much into dancing. Oh, wow. Ooh. And I adore belly dancing, by the way. Oh. <laughs> This might, might be my answer, too. Okay, let's uh, talk about your dreams. Maybe your childhood dreams. Uh, did any of them f come true? And 
I, I mean, did you dream of becoming a ball ballet dancer, maybe? No, I have, yeah. I have dreamed to become a, a doctor like my dad, but mm -hmm. it didn't happen. So in that, in, in, in that, uh, I wouldn't say I had, a, I, I had this dream coming true. But do you still want to become a to doctor? Uh, no, not anymore. Not okay, anymore. if you went back years back, would you I go would, for it? Yes, I would. I would for sure insist on me being a doctor and oh. not an economist. Uh, the European Projects Coordinator at AGB Europe. Can you talk about that? Can you tell us what you do, what happens in general, the projects and... Uh, maybe here I would just talk about one of our projects that I love talking about. It's mm -hmm. the petition called We Want Europe in Nagorno-Karabakh. This is a petition that was for having European institutions in Nagorno-Karabakh because Nagorno-Karabakh is the, the only non-recognized country in the world mm -hmm. uh, where you won't see international uh, or European institutions. So they don't have inter information on the ground. The Europeans don't get informed on the ground. And with our petition, we want to bring these institutions uh, to, to Nagorno-Karabakh and also some European aid as well. Why not? So, so when did this all start, this project? This project has started last year in uh, October, November. And we had uh, so many uh, VIP people, meaning uh, decision makers, politicians, writers, lawyers, signing the petition. And of course, the first one was my husband, and he also rec recruited some of his colleagues to, to sign the petition. So this is one of our projects. Okay, we have a comment here, very, okay. very interesting. Uh, Oops. <laughs> uh, uh, there is a question. Hello, that somebody is me. Uh, Yeva only, she writes. Okay, Yeva is her name. So hi, Yeva. Hi, Yeva. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so she's asking, uh, would like to know what was your pretty guest's culture shock when she married her foreign husband? I'm married for seven years now to an English, have a few culture shocks. Would be interesting to know her experience. Is her husband as greedy? <laughs> Oh wow, okay. Okay. We get what you're okay. trying to do okay. here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, officially, I've kept my Armenian name. Thanks. Okay, so this is the question. Um, did you have any culture shocks? Uh, so it was about culture shock, not about greediness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> culture shock after yeah. you married uh, Frank. Some, you know, something that was really, yes. really different. And uh, I knew him very well before getting uh, married with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I made sure I know him enough to get married, first of all, so I won't have any shocks after. But uh, about the culture shock uh, or shocks, okay, there is there is one thing I will mm -hmm. uh, I will talk about, a and it's not <laughs> a confession, mm -hmm. and. It's a very European thing, and I don't think I can do anything against that. And and the, I don't think there's a po there's a point in doing something against that. And it's mm -hmm. uh, the European way of cleaning nose loudly. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I we... have that same thing in the U.S. By the way, really? Yeah, I uh, didn't know about it being in in the U.S. as well. So I'm totally okay with that now. I am yeah. totally by okay. <laughs> exactly. Now is the keyword. Mm -hmm. Now I'm totally okay with that too. But what I asked my husband, I said, look, do it in front of me as much as you want. But please, when, you are, when, when we are among relatives. Armenians, yes, yeah. please just don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> when in Rome, do as Romans do. Just, <laughs> I remember when I was um, back in my class, I was a senior 17 years ago. Okay, it was long ago. So, <laughs> excuse me. So we were uh, writing a test or something, so it was a total silence in the classroom. And then one of the guys took the 
Kleenex and it, he, he went like <laughs> so loud all over the room and then I noticed that the only face with the round eyes was mine because, <laughs> because no one paid attention to that and I was like ah oh, okay I guess I guess it's okay <laughs> <laughs> so this was my experience that is John what is love what is love? Uh, <laughs> what the right question to ask her, I think. She would be. She knows. Oh, yeah. wow. Well, well, I, uh, I could philosophize all around about this topic. But maybe the first thing that comes to my mind is understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the core of, of love and also acceptance and also uh, oh, so many. Mm, so many nice things all, all together. Uh, uh, support to each other. Trying to push up each other. And uh, being proud of each other. And uh, holding each other's hands everywhere and every time. In every situation. Maybe. So this is how it started <laughs> with holding hands, right? Exactly. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> we we left that part. We dropped it, <laughs> but <laughs> that have <I> did. <laughs> but I know I know the details of the story. So the last part of <laughs> the last part of it is that we were holding our each other each other's hands uh, for four hours on our way back to to Yerevan. Wow. From that. This is how it started and this is how it is till now. Atev Jan, do you have any questions to our show, to us? Yes, I have one. <laughs> Why ha have you chosen the title Homesick at Home? Mm, good uh, question. Please tell okay. me. Rina, do you want to answer it this time? Okay. I guess this you, question you, was asked before. It has been. <laughs> really? Oh, I, I was trying to be original, but it didn't You're work. used to answering <laughs> alone. And <laughs> so, <laughs> no, so go ahead. So uh, the show has started with a different uh, concept, with a different uh, title. title. It was I called, see. yes, this was... Uh, it was called American in Year This was like two years ago? Three. Three already. years ago, okay. And uh, the host, okay, I'll start, you will continue. American and Yerevan, yes. <laughs> um, the first host was a, a guy we, which was alone in the studio, Stephen. Hello, Stephen Oxner, our, uh, our dear friend and co colleague, co-host and friend. We miss you a lot. So he started this show alone, and he is an American guy. Uh, he used to live in Yerevan. Uh, having an uh, Armenian partner and wife, and now he has a wonderful uh, girl, Anna Maria, and mm, and so he was telling about his experience of in living, Yerevan. yes, of living in Yerevan, all these funny stories and stuff, and then and then I came, and then now we need to go on an advertisement break, and <laughs> when we come back, I will continue with the story how it all happened. Okay, deal. Yeah, please enlighten me. <laughs> you, you're giving you're giving the chance to think for this one or two more minutes. Okay, <laughs> stay tuned. This is Homesick at Home. Our guest is wonderful Tatevik Manukyan, and we have another ten minutes to go. Oh. So do not miss this opportunity. Ina, yes, Rina. I feel homesick. You want to talk about it this Friday? Friday on Radio Van. Homesick at home. Homesick at home. Homesick at home, and we're back, and we have ten more minutes to go. <sighs> we had John. ten so minutes was... before. Now we still have ten minutes. Uh, no, cool. well, <laughs> <laughs> this is magic happens here in Radio Van. <laughs> well, the, tonight's stories. I uh, mean, <laughs> mermaids. <laughs> <laughs> mermaids, exactly. Well, real love, uh, romantics, <laughs> <laughs> mermaids. <laughs> Okay, so Tatev Jan, I was telling you about the show. So exactly, this is how we please. started as American in Yerevan. And then I joined the show thanks to Shushanik who believed in my skills. skills and exactly. also thanks to the Eurovision song 2015, which was written by me. And which was actually a great which brought song. Me, yes. oh, thank you. Which brought me here in the studio for an interview. 
So then we started to uh, invite guests and uh, then we realized that we uh, we're kind of done with this American Yerevan uh, theme and we want to kind of enlarge it with more global maybe uh, thing. So um, all the guests that we had, who were they? Either uh, English speakers who live in Armenia, like yeah. foreigners, or diasporans who mostly repatriated, came here with different stories, success stories, I don't know, funny things, failures, adventures, laughter. So you got them all. <laughs> yes, so we invite them all still. So the homesick at home feeling is something that all of them, that the, unites all of our yes. guests. Uh, this is what Rina knows what it is and actually even m I do know what this feeling is because uh, when I studied in the US yes. uh, I was homesick for Armenia of course when I came back home I missed the life that I created there with the friends mm. the f the um, really good people I met uh, so this is the feeling that you have wherever you go you are kind of homesick exactly so that's how that's yeah, how we attached, made up with the know, with that's how we came up with the title homesick at home uh -huh. you're home yes. you're at home but you're still homesick <laughs> what what actually brings me here is uh trying to discover the hidden spots in armenia mm -hmm. uh, i wouldn't even say uh, i love being the whole time in yerevan i mm. love yerevan but I like also discovering the whole Armenian and Artsakh as well. Uh, so this is this also something that brings me brings me to Armenia. So, so you still discover each time you discover something new. Exactly, and I'm trying to to do to do as much as possible um, because you know there are so many spots. Armenia is not only Yerevan and the surroundings, and uh, and this is what I had when I when I was when I was living in Armenia, but right now it's just discovering the whole country from the north to, to, to south. So, uh, where would be your favorite place in Armenia? Except Datev. <laughs> Except Datev. <laughs> Monastery. Uh, Datev would be on a different level here. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I guess so. Among the wonders of the world, I, I guess. <laughs> Uh, I haven't decided my favorite, favorite spot in Armenia yet, but I think my husband did already. Mm -hmm. And he somehow was felt connected to Kaban, mm -hmm. uh, the Mount Khustup. And he really thinks about retreating there, going right. there to for, for, for bringing his thoughts in... in uh, in uh, how, how would you say yeah. he gets a special energy there I guess. exactly he found special, his energy. special energy source yeah maybe wow. we'll discover someday that Kapan. frank has uh kapan Ka kapanese Kapanis. <laughs> roots Kapanis. <laughs> Kapanis. <laughs> Kapanis. <laughs> Jan, is there something you change about yourself about myself mm -hmm. oh there are so many <laughs> there are so many and i'm i'm working on them uh, okay, name every one day. of them. No, Fear of mermaids would be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> to change. I guess she it. enjoys this thing. Maybe. No, no, this is really bothering no. me. And I'm really thinking about going to a specialist. <laughs> but it this kind is that of, bad. It kind of matches the, the Datev story, you know. It's kind of like a fairy tale. Do you ever more. see nightmares with mermaids? No, but... When I'm close to water, uh -huh. oh, wow. then this is something that really bothers so me. So you wow. don't like water? I love water, but I will never go in a pool alone, and I will never go in a sea or or, uh, wow. or uh, in in water in general if there is no one inside. Wow. This is that bad. Yeah, <laughs> and okay. I'm not joking about it. We're joking, but I see this is getting more yeah, and more yeah. serious. <laughs> yeah, intense. Down. We're 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 up. With our time, we're done. Unfortunately, unfortunately, <laughs> exactly. And uh, we would like. Uh, we recently asked this question, and I would like to ask her uh, also. What would you say to Armenian people now, uh, once they have uh, reached and passed this border of uh, new reality? Let's so to say. What would you 
mm. tell them, recommend or? Um, that we all, each of us has to take a self-responsibility of trying to build a new Armenia. Mm. We don't have to wait for someone else. We don't have yes. to wait for the government. We have to start from ourselves and we have to try to become competent enough in our jobs to do it uh, in, the, in, the, in the best way. Each, each of us in their own field. Exactly. <laughs> Very true. Thank you so much. Thanks for being with us. Thank, Thank you, you for so sharing much. your stories. We yeah. enjoyed you. And I enjoyed my, <laughs> my conversation with you too. So and thank you. It's great that I used this, uh, you know, possibility to invite <laughs> that also. Yes. Yes. Thanks, Inajan, so much. And thank, you. thank you. Um, I hope you have a safe trip, uh, give a hug to our PESA, <laughs> <laughs> and of course come back soon. Dear listeners of Radio Van, this, is, this was Homesick at Home. Have a great Friday night, have a special weekend, and we will we'll be back with you next Friday. Good night. Good night, good night, good night. Good night.